Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Jackie Ina, AKA Jackie O. So you wanna learn about SPF. Well, you've come to the right place. I talk a lot about SPF on my channel. It's actually probably like every skincare video I've ever done, every tip about hyperpigmentation I've ever done, I've always found a way to slide SPF in there. But I've never really done a video talking about my favorite types of SPF, my favorite brands that I would recommend, especially for in case you haven't noticed, your girl's got a little bit of pigmentation to her skin. A part of me was still kind of like navigating what my favorites were, which ones I liked, which ones I didn't. But then I figured why not do a video talking about all of them giving you the good, the bad, and the ugly with SPF and sunscreen. There's actually a video on the Naturally Curly YouTube channel. I don't know if you guys follow that, but they did like a sunscreen back-to-back -back wear test and they showed you like on the scale of one to ashy how bad they look. I want you guys to check out their video as well. But shout out to Evelyn, by the way. I love her. She's freaking hilarious. She's in that video. If you guys know Evelyn from the internet, then you will enjoy that video. Before we actually try on the SPF stuff, I know you don't think you're gonna be watching this video without subscribing. I know you don't think you're gonna just sit here and get all this information without subscribing. I mean, I, I feel like it's the least you can do because my head wrap is cute. Like, come on. It is cute though, right? Let's talk a little bit about sunscreen and SPF do's and don'ts. One, you guys already know, you never leave the house without it, okay? I am that auntie, all right? Every day, as long as there's light outside, you better be wearing the sunscreen. Even when it's bright out and I'm indoors, I'm still wearing it because the UVB is just like a ninja. It just comes through the cracks and stuff. Like even when you're inside, you're still exposed to the sun. So you always wanna be careful of that even when it's cloudy even when it's raining, you are still being exposed to the sun. So no matter what, especially if you have problematic skin like I do, especially if your scars are always clapping back at you, okay, they're only gonna get worse if you're not protecting them during the day. In place of a moisturizer, I typically use a sunscreen. Or I'll just use a moisturizer that has SPF in it. So all my bases are covered. A lot of people think people with darker skin don't need SPF. Uh, that's the biggest lie, okay? Big mistake. They, skin cancer does not discriminate. And even if you didn't believe any of that, because there's some conspiracies about, I'm not even gonna get into them that. It's still just good to wear it just because I get scarring, so it helps to shield them from getting worse and getting darker. Two plus two equals four does not apply with SPF. If you wear a SPF 10 moisturizer and a SPF 20 foundation, it doesn't mean you're wearing SPF 30 altogether. That's not how SPF works. The higher one takes precedence. General rule of thumb, I don't usually go over like SPF 40, 50 because after 40, 50, they all pretty much do the same thing. SPF 75 is really not gonna save your skin much more than SPF 40. So don't be out there on Amazon and eBay thinking that if you get SPF 300, you're doing something special, okay? Chalkboard Charles, that's not how it works. The lowest I usually go for is like 20, 25. There are two types of SPFs to look for. Just to kind of like simplify it, there's a chemical SPF and there's a physical SPF. The two things that you can typically look for to tell which is which are the ingredients. Titanium dioxide and zinc oxide are usually what you'll find in your physical sunscreen. Now, I know you guys have heard zinc oxide before. What have we learned from zinc oxide? Zinc oxide is not always your friend. Zinc oxide is not always an ally of ours, okay? Usually those are the ones that leave you looking ghostly and I mean, it's cool because it's October now, but what about December? What about during the holidays? You know what I mean? Like those are things to consider. Okay, the physical ones are usually more creamier. The physical sunscreens usually leave the white cast of shame. Now common ingredients to look for in chemical sunscreens are oxybenzone. Don't say that right. Oh, I said that right. Octinoxate, octosalate. Avobenzone. I wanna educate you guys. I, don't, I just don't wanna sit here and push product, okay? I want you guys to learn a thing or two. I'm also going to leave some resources down in the description box on ingredients to look for and stay away from in sunscreens because some of them can irritate the skin. Someone can cause allergic reaction. Some of these have synthetic estrogens in them that can disrupt the hormone system. And I just want you guys to have as much knowledge as you possibly can, okay? Let's get into it. All right, ready to get ashy? Let's roll. All right, so the first one we have is Murad. The Murad Invisibler Perfecting Shield. This one is probably the bougiest of the bougie. Main ingredient here is avobenzone, 2% and homosalate, octosalate, and octocrylene, which would tell us that this is a chemical sunscreen. It's extremely clear. It goes on like a primer. So I feel like my pores are disappearing. I just feel like it just, 
Oh, now she is expensive though. I didn't realize she was that expensive. You get SPF 30 for one ounce, 65 dollars. But that 65 non-ashy dollars well spent, I will tell you that. I definitely feel like for the price of Murad though, like you could definitely find something that's not as expensive out there because you have to wear this every day. So while I do like this, I wouldn't necessarily say go out and splurge unless you like the whole like primer in one, primer SPF in one aspects of it. Look at how non ashy, look at how there's no flashback Mary effect here. As you can see, it also blurred my skin. There goes the shine. That's another thing. Some of these SPFs can be really greasy and really, liquidy and they don't dry down and I have oily combination skin. So that's another thing that I look for is typically something that's one, not gonna be heavy on my skin, two, not going to be purple on my skin, and three, not gonna feel like an extra added layer of, of skin. It feels like a new skin sometimes. Anyway, here's how the Murad Invisiblur looks. It's literally, literally clear, like, It's clear. But she's also very expensive. So let's move on to the next option. And yes, I am wiping off each application in case you're wondering. The next product I have is the Chorus Skincare Yogurt Nourishing Fluid Veil Face Sunscreen. This is a broad spectrum SPF 30. Please see the link down below if you want a little bit more research on what broad spectrum means. This one, I'm gonna shake it up. This one feels very liquidy and this is actually one that I have not tried yet. So I'll be debuting it right here on the channel. Based on the ingredients, it is a chemical sunscreen because it has avobenzone, avobenzone, homosalate, ox, octinoxate, octosalate, and octocrylene. So basically the same ingredients as the Murat Invisiblur. Except this one you get 1.69 fluid ounces. Turn up! And this one's only $35. Not really what I expected from Caress because Caress is pretty expensive. Let's get, oh, she's, oh, oh, she's white. Whenever I see whites, I'm 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 usually a little scared. All right, I'm usually a little triggered. I should probably rub this in though. Let me let me just. Okay. It definitely has that sunscreen smell, but it's a very thin formula. That's another thing. Usually, the chemical SPFs I find tend to be a little bit more watery, a little bit easier to spread. Whereas physical, they're thick, like she real thick. But this one was easy to spread. It feels nice. There is a little bit of that oily feeling though, but I wouldn't necessarily run away from it for that. I do like the fact that it was very thin, easy to spread. It smells good. It does smell like yogurt. Ooh, is she looking protected from the sun? She looking a little bit protected. Oh. So we're putting all of them to the test today. Okay, even some of the ones I have not tried. The Tatcha Silken Pore Perfecting Sunscreen is a perfect example perfect example of a physical sunscreen that that you got to watch out for. You going to have to be real careful with this one. Okay. Let me show you why. Now, while I do love this SPF for how it makes my skin feel. <laughs> the purple tint is just giving me Beetlejuice and it's very hard to camouflage. A lot of times whenever I'm filming tutorials and I have no makeup on in the beginning and I look a little this, it's usually because of this SPF. I'm not saying run away from it. I do like this product, but I am saying you may not want to head to the beach on your no makeup day. I woke up like this thinking that no one's gonna notice because they will. Now, if you are lighter than me, you probably aren't gonna have this problem, okay? The darker you go, you're definitely going to get more, this, this, this is a problematic sunscreen. <laughs> you have to just be ready to put a full face on top of it because Tatcha by herself, and mind you, I'm, I'm shooting on an HD camera and I have bright lights, so everything is, is more exaggerated than it is in real life sometimes. And I just want y'all to see what that cast like though. She's expensive too, I just looked up the price. Oh my God. This is SPF 30 broad spectrum and it is 65 dollars, but you get two ounces. This usually lasts me about two months. While it is ashen in color and I do like the product, I probably will be sticking to some other ones after I finish this one from Tatcha. They got other good products though, I like their stuff. Someone recommended that one to me in lieu of something else 
And they were like, oh my God, it's so clear. It doesn't leave a film or anything. And I'm like, I, did you forget I was black? Or did you, how did that thought process work, you know? And you can always see how ashy it is around the edges. That's where the real tea always is. It kind of like gathers around that area. It like piles up. It's like running away from my face. Like in the center of my face, it actually doesn't look bad. But this is where the sun really hits your girl. The perimeter. Here is a chemical SPF 35 from Glossier Invisible Shield, which is arguably, I think, one of the trendiest brands on the market right now. I recently started using this one about a week ago, so I, about a week ago, <sighs> totally uncalled for and unnecessary. I know. You get one fluid ounce and this will run you 34 dollars. I wanna know when did SPF get so expensive? Like that's expensive to me. Can can we get something in the 15, 20 dollar range? Just because I gotta wear this every day. I shake this up because I find that this has kind of a interesting consistency. It's like chunky but watery at the same time. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He just clapped all the way back at me when I pumped it out of my hand. That was Glossier, I don't want any issues. I don't think that was necessary, thank you. So when you squirt it out, sometimes because it is watery, it kind of, you know? So just be mindful of that. This one's actually virtually very clear. It has sweet orange peel for a scent, which I actually quite like the scent. It's very pleasant and it's very light. Now this one, I do like. I've been using it all week underneath makeup and on the days where I don't wear makeup at all. But the one thing that I will say is it seems to kind of react interestingly with primers on top. I find that it starts to ball up based on how I apply the primer. Like if I don't dab the primer on, this guaranteed will ball up and start to like gather around. It's really weird. I don't know if I can show you what, I should just, should, I should just shut up and show you what I mean, huh? Let me just hold. hold. Please hold while I transfer your call. So if I remember correctly, I did this with the NARS primer. Okay, and let's just see if she'll give us the same effect. Come on, don't cooperate today. You better come through. Don't make me look stupid, Glossier. Um, hmm. It's getting, it's getting there. I don't remember trying this with any other primers, but I'll keep 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 at it there. Okay, so doesn't wanna do it today? Okay, so suddenly she decides she wants to cooperate, and I think it may have to do with the fact that I shook the, shook the bottle up before I applied it. Maybe that helped to kind of like disperse the ingredients a little bit better. But she's definitely on my watch list. She's really cute, but I just honestly, I've noticed this is actually the first time I've applied it where it didn't ball up. But that could have been an error due to me. Putting another primer on top, I swear. I swear it was balling up last week. Every single time I applied it. Now it wants to cooperate. I was trying to prove a point, man. All right, it ain't gonna work. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna. Okay, it's not gonna work. I'm just gonna put it to rest. I'm just gonna assume shaking it up helped to activate it, okay? Now I don't ever wanna see you cutting up again. The Benefit Dream Screen was the SPF that really restored my faith in all SPFs. I think this was the first chemical SPF I ever tried. I was just like, what is this new world of SPF that actually goes on clear? Like I didn't even understand it. I thought it was fraudulent. I didn't even, it was too good to be true to me. But honestly, it's never steered me wrong. It's SPF 45. Good luck finding it, because it's usually, when you see it, it's usually sold out. I almost kind of feel like the Dream Screen does exactly what the Tatcha one claims to do, and that this one is more pore perfecting and more smoothing, and it's, let me just stop talking, okay. This one you definitely do have to shake up because she's very watery, and there's even like a little ball in there that you can hear to help aid with, you hear that? Ooh, ASMR, ASMR. It is Broad Spectrum SPF 45. It retails for $32 and you get 1.5 fluid ounces. When they say invisible, this is literally invisible. It kind of tricks you. It makes you feel like it's going to be oil in a bottle, but the more you kind of like push it into the skin, it actually dries down to like a silky matte finish. And once it's fully like rubbed into the skin, I'm left feeling like I can put anything on top of this. I can leave the house without having to like camouflage the film of it. It's very lightweight and it doesn't make more oily throughout the day, thank God. And once it's fully like in the skin, I'm left feeling like I can put makeup on top of it. I don't have to worry about it feeling heavy or like it's sitting on top of the skin. Like the oiliness of it goes right away. I leave the house without having to camouflage this SPF. I would highly recommend this product in my like top two, three fave. And look, see how much the shiny parts dry down. And for those of you guys that are acne prone like me, except when I cut out dairy, <laughs> get with the winning team, this is also oil free. Now the last SPF on my list, good luck finding it, cause sure enough, I checked four, 
four local Sephora's and I could only find them at one, okay? And it's sold out on the Sephora website. This is the CoverFX Clear Cover. It's a broad spectrum SPF 30. You get one fluid ounce for 45 Zoolas. This is another one of those SPFs that feels like a primer. It kind of does what the Murad Invisibler does. It smooths the skin. It is very lightweight. Now the only gripe I have with the CoverFX Clear Cover is the packaging is horrible. Somehow there's like a defect in there to where it doesn't let you This is a brand new bottle, so bear with me. I'm trying to break her in. The packaging for this thing sucks. It really sucks. Please tell me this is not defective. Because I've been pumping for a little bit too long. Something is real suspect about this packaging, y'all. I'm telling you, I really think this is defective. I've actually had this issue with several of my clear covers from CoverFX to where halfway through they just stop pumping. They just clock out early and you can't open it to get to the rest of the product. So I'm hoping that they took it off the shelves because they're trying to fix it, but this packaging is not the business. Like I'm gonna need a squeezy tube or a droplet or something because this product is amazing, but the, it don't matter if you can't get to the product. And I really feel like this one is defective. I pumped it like a hundred times. No way, no way. Cover effects, you were supposed to, you, we was rooting for you. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you? Thank God I bought two on backup. Let me go grab another one so I can show you what it looks like. Gosh, how annoying. I'm so disappointed. This is actually mad. The tubes have gone mad. Okay. See, I knew that one was defective because it only took three pumps to get into the new one. <sighs> Cover effects. I'm gonna need y'all to fix that. It's happened to every single tube I have used. But if this ain't the best formula on the market. <gasps> My only issue though is that packaging. And some people like to say packaging doesn't matter. Um, yes, the hell it does. What do you mean? But if this ain't the smoothest matte finish we've seen from all of these SPFs, I don't know what the hell is. My skin feels ready to take on the world. My skin feels ready to clap back at anyone who says otherwise. It looks smooth, pores are filled, lines are filled. This is honestly my favorite formula on the market. I would happily pay $45, but if you keep running into the issues that I do with this airtight pump that is unfortunately highly defective, I mean, the only way to get to the rest of the product is if you bust the bottle, bust the bottle open. And I don't have the time, okay? She's a veteran, you know, she's army strong, but she's also not trying to break a nail. So cover effects, you can try, you can, tr you're trying it. You really are trying it. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful, informative on a little bit of, you know, the nitty gritty on SPFs, what to look for, what to stay away from. And I hope that that also kind of guided you on where to start. Don't forget to check out the Naturally Curly YouTube channel to see the SPF video that they did. It's hilarious. And they actually try more budget friendly drugstore options. I just don't have any. And the few ones I did try, I just don't like them. They just look greasy for you, girl. Please make sure to subscribe and thumbs up this video. It really helps my content. Your girl's trying to go global. Your girl's almost at two milli. And the only way to do that is with the continued support of you guys. Thumbs and up those videos and getting them to as many news feeds as we possibly can because YouTube really be hating. Some of you guys who are subscribed don't even get notifications sometimes. YouTube, what's good? Square up. So since I gave you all these resources, I mean, you might as well stay for the next video because not only do I put it right here, I make it so easy, but I mean, I'm kind of lit. You can do one more video. You got it. You can, no, you can do it. You might as well. You're already here. Go ahead. Go for it. I'm waiting.